Hey, I'm Terrence. Welcome back. I'm a middle school pastor. Did you just grow? Come on now, don't do that. That's what I usually get when I tell people what I do. And I get it, middle school was rough for most of us. Why? Words. Maybe words our parents said to us or something a friend said behind our backs. Maybe it was a teacher or a coach's comment and those words just kind of stuck with us, messed us up. And the truth is, what we're talking about today could have changed all that. It's one of the reasons I wish every parent, every teacher, every coach understood that when I say this, you might hear that. We're wired to hear the same words differently. But you knew that already. You've seen it before. Think about playing sports as a kid. I played basketball and I had coaches who were tough. They weren't afraid to let me have it. And for me, their yelling was kind of motivation like, oh, you don't think I'm good enough? I'll prove you wrong. But the exact same words from the exact same coaches crushed the souls of other teammates. I could see those guys thinking, I knew I wasn't good enough. Now coaches calling me out, man, I'm the worst. What's the difference? Temperament. Your reaction to words, good or bad, is the result of your temperament. It's why the stakes are so high when we talk to each other. We've gotta know how our words are gonna land with someone before we speak. Knowing their temperament helps that. And you know what? It could have totally changed middle school for you and for me. It could have totally changed your first marriage, that one job, your relationship with your kids. So the question is, how do we know the right thing to say? The next part of Ephesians 4.29 gives us a clue. It tells us to say only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. And if we're honest, that's not usually why we say what we say. Usually, I talk because I need you to know something. Paul, who wrote this verse, is flipping the script. He says, I should talk because you need something. Here's what he's pointing to. We're each wired to need certain words. Based on your temperament, you have four innate needs, things you've got to get to be your best self. An easy way for me to think about this is like food. I'm a guy. Food makes sense to me. At least three times a day, I've got to eat. God made me to need food. And when I haven't eaten in a while, I get a little hungry. Actually, a little hangry. I start craving things. Well, the same thing happens with words. I'm wired to need certain words. When I haven't heard them lately, I start craving them. And so do you. In Ephesians 4.29, Paul says that when I'm talking to you, I should be thinking about your needs using the words you're craving. And here's the best news, especially for us guys. It's not a secret. I don't have to guess what you need, your temperament tells me. To teach us exactly what the four innate needs are for each temperament, I'm gonna let Kathleen take it from here. So we're gonna talk about innate needs today. So I wanna pass these out to you so you have them in front of you. These are a list of all. And here, I think I'm going to keep one of these okay. for myself. So what we're going to do is we're going to read through these first, and then I'm going to ask you a little bit about each one for you, and we're going to talk about it. Okay. Um, the sanguine, acceptance, attention, approval, and affection. The choleric, sense of control, loyalty, credit for work, and appreciation. The phlegmatic, the green, is harmony, lack of stress, respect, and feeling of worth. And the melancholy, the blue, is safety, support, sensitivity and space and silence. So I'm gonna ask you, Andrew, when you're thinking about safety, what first comes to your mind when you sure. think about that? I think the first thing I think of is like physical safety. Mm -hmm. But for me, I think the important thing for, is really kind of emotional safety. And like I mentioned before, mm -hmm. I'm way more comfortable now going when I'm with close friends that I trust. Okay. Even with physical safety, sometimes I won't even enter a building if I don't think it's safe, or I won't go into up to a group unless I think it's safe. Do you ever have that feeling of outside of that? Oh, I don't think I'm as, as sensitive to physical safety mm -hmm. as maybe like you're saying, mm -hmm. but overall I'd say I'm probably safety oriented. I'm uh -huh. a fire marshal at work. Are you really? <laughs> <laughs> That's, cool. That's perfect. Yeah, I have huh? a vest. You have a vest <laughs> yeah. and everything? What? Wow. Is it like neon? Yeah. 
Okay. Yep. So now you want to be excited. Yeah. I want to be a fire marshal. A yellow one and <laughs> an orange. Yeah. yeah, a yellow so and an orange. So Officer Andrew is Officer yeah. Andrew. Yeah. 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 All right. I, didn't, I didn't know if that would come up for everyone to know. But <laughs> yes, but that's but a good thing. To, yeah, so you can have false humility. I feel, <laughs> I feel better. I feel better sitting next to you now, knowing. Yeah, yeah. this room. I feel so much safer. <laughs> well, safety in and of itself is an innate need. When you first read that, is there a connection then that you feel? Because each one of these is specifically for the temperament that it's written under. Yeah. So safety right. for a melancholy is usually a big deal. Sure, and I think when I'm with my friends who are maybe other colors, I'm mm -hmm. the one that's kind of saying, hey, maybe we need to think about this to make sure. Mm -hmm. So I probably do lean into that, especially mm -hmm. when I'm with others and I feel like no one else is making the making decisions, the right? Or, or sure. they're making decisions too hastily for you. Right, sure. or maybe even reckless. Right. True. Yeah, I don't like it when the, the yellows are driving. <laughs> oh, <laughs> there, there you go. Okay. You may get there quickly, Fine. but oh my a little God. on yeah. the fun side. Drive a lot is important, though. right? Okay. Yeah. No, when I was little, my mom would be driving and I would have to go to the bathroom. And I would say, <laughs> well, go as fast as the law allows. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. As the law as allows. The law as allows. the law allows. Because oh melancholies are very safe. black and yeah. white, right? And we're safe. And not getting in trouble. Exactly. Yeah. Um, the next one on there is support. And as you read through there, sometimes you connect much more quickly with one than the other. So in this order, I'm just saying safety, support, sensitivity, mm. space, and silence. Does one jump out at you more than another? Uh, the space and silence. Really? Yeah, that's definitely where I feel like I get my energy and where I can work the most efficiently is when I'm by myself in mm -hmm. space and I need time to think about things. Mm -hmm. and so that makes sense. Silence. Mm hmm Quiet. Yeah, love it. Mm hmm Like, <laughs> <re> <laughs> I'm overwhelmed. Yeah, the penguins don't really. What are you talking about right now? Go for that kind of silence, right? <laughs> no. Tell me, though, when you're, when... I, sometimes I've heard even melancholy say they can be at a ball game and lots of stuff can be going on and they mm. can still have that space and silence. Oh, yeah. There. Yeah, it's not Tell just them. about the physical silence. It's kind mm -hmm. of about letting your mind kind of be within itself or, I don't know, that sounds yeah, way deeper. <laughs> than you know <laughs> <what I> mean. <laughs> but you are deep. You That's are the deep. whole idea, yeah. right? Yeah. Right? You no, know, one of the things that definitely came to mind for space and silence, mm -hmm. um, I live with, I have roommates, okay. and one of my best friends who I lived with uh, is definitely a yellow. <laughs> and he was always, you know, we'd get home from work and I'd be in my room kind of unwinding. Mm -hmm. and he'd come in and just be like, so what do you want, what do, you want to do? <laughs> and I'd just be like, I'm doing it. I'm already, I'm already doing it. I'm doing here. It. <laughs> what are you trying to do? <laughs> what are you trying be, to do? And, yeah. and he would, even if I was like on, sitting on my bed watching a movie or something, he would come in. And he would just sit on the floor. Stop. <laughs> yeah. And just be like, we got to talk for a while. Yeah. I'm just like, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. So that. interrupted, yeah. came in your space, and mm -hmm. then that. So what do you think about that when you're thinking about space I and silence? I think you need to be a little bit more sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do it all the time. Yeah. It's so funny now that I'm, we're like processing through this. I think about my poor husband mm -hmm. in the morning, and he's just like, I need 20 minutes, please. And I'm yeah. just like. Babe, <laughs> God woke us up this morning. Are you so excited? <laughs> so, Look at us, we're yeah. live. Um, Which yeah. goes right into mm -hmm. acceptance, attention, approval, affection. Mm -hmm. So tell us a little bit about acceptance. What does um, that? What, how does that? What does that mean to you? What does that? Mean? Um, when I think about acceptance, I honestly think about my childhood. Mm -hmm. And I was talking about this the other day with one of my friends. I think that I, I was that friend that like fought really hard to have friends. Like okay. I would go and get gifts for everyone for their birthday. Mm -hmm. I would like pay for it, want to pay for everything. Like, and I think that it was, now that I'm looking back, I think it was rooted out of a place of acceptance. Mm -hmm. um, and I think even with like my dad and stuff, mm -hmm. um, he was present but not present. So he was okay. in the house, but he worked so much. And so I think I always had this validation thing and I pinged back and forth between like validation from people and then validation from like intimate relationships mm -hmm. versus like, validation from accolades mm -hmm. and people cheering me on. And you know, this is sense. why I love going through the innate needs. Mm -hmm. Because what I think we're gonna find is what Tony's really talking about right now is approval and acceptance. So remember, yours is attention, yes. affection, yeah. approval, and acceptance. Mm -hmm. So I think when we get down in there and we start defining these, yeah. you're gonna see some of the things that you just described very clearly mm -hmm. fit into those definitions. I would think, tell me a little bit about acceptance when it comes to being invited or at a party or when girlfriends are going out to lunch. Okay, so one of the things that I taught myself maybe about four years ago was to 
celebrate, not criticize. Mm -hmm. So like I, we have like a three best friendship with three women. Mm -hmm. And typically I am the person that kind of comes in and is celebrated mm -hmm. and oh, it's so cool. And so in this three best friendship, I actually came into a mm -hmm. friendship that was already formed. Okay. And so after a while, you know, they would do things together mm -hmm. and I'd be like, <laughs> Mm. You don't text me. Yeah, but you don't want to say me. it, right? Yeah, yeah. And so I had to really start like processing. Let me celebrate their friendship yeah. versus being critical. And that's a great it. step into your strengths. It was hard. It was hard. But it um, absolutely is in that definition of acceptance. Yeah. Being I invited, invited to the party. Exactly. <laughs> my name exactly. On the list. What happens, Leslie, when you're invited to a party? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like what? <laughs> I'm probably looking at my calendar to figure out how I can credibly say no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I don't want to lie. Okay. You know? No. I don't want to say I don't want to go. No. Uh, so I'm going to look for a good reason to say no. There you go. That's good. There, there you, you go. go. Like I want to be invited yeah. to the party. Well, I know you do. Yeah. <laughs> Text me. Text me. <laughs> and what a, what one of the innate needs that the sanguine really struggles with too is attention. Because there's a difference. Not every sanguine wants to be center stage. Mm, for sure. What does that mean to you? Um, it's true. I What's interesting is that my career is just stage mm -hmm. and camera and voiceover work and stuff like that. But I truly get filled up when someone's like sitting with me face to face with their phone down, looking me in my eye, mm -hmm. nodding at the things I say and interacting with the things I say, asking me questions, mm -hmm. all Showing those different things. interest in your story. Yeah, like leaning into yeah. it. Yeah, and eye contact. <laughs> what? what? Like that, like see, that, I already like learned that. See how so, I can yeah. love you better right there, <laughs> right? But it really is focused yeah. on contact, Oh yeah. right? It's like all me. Like, yeah. Oh God, this is so, so bad that, when you say it. Yeah, well, but <laughs> you know what? That That's what some of the sanguines definitely um, struggle with is some yeah. of the things that are your innate needs. Society says, no, 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 no. Not attention, not approval. Mm -hmm. We do not seek those things. Mm -hmm. no but way. you are wired for those right, things. So they need to get it together. So, <laughs> but All really, it's like... about you being that in your strengths, right? Tell me, tell me about that. And what I hear most about, for, from sanguines about approval yeah. is, take me as I am. Yeah. Ask me not to change. You know, I'm loud. I'm sparkly, right? We're I radiant. wiggle, right? We're radiant. Yeah. So, and, and to not ask for that, to be different. Does that yeah. sound like no, something? No, absolutely, then? for sure. So, That's Leslie, great. tell me a little mm. bit. <laughs> As you read through loyalty, sense of control, appreciation, and credit for work, which one of those jump right out? Do you connect with all four of them immediately? Uh, you know, I feel like the killjoy here, because when we were doing <laughs> the weaknesses, I was a little blank, too. Um, I, I don't see myself as a very controlling person. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't see myself being driven by these things. Okay. So you telling me that these are my needs? Mm -hmm. Well, tell me a little bit about let's what, talk about what, that. yes, let's talk about that because there's remember one of one of your desires or motivators mm -hmm. is, is control, mm -hmm. but that is very different than a sense of control. Okay. 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 There's people who really abuse it and want to be in charge. Right. They are right. power driven. Right. Then there's the cholerics in their healthy strengths that understand that a sense of control, all the cogs working together, everybody doing their part yeah, so that you don't have to step in. Yeah, that's definitely me. Yeah. I'm definitely thinking ahead and trying to figure out how, how things could go best. Okay. And what part I can play. And I leave space for other people to play their part. I'm mm -hmm. not definitely trying to own everybody's piece of it. Right. Um, and, but I'm also willing to step in and do someone else's piece if I need to. Yeah. Um, and when do you feel like you need to? When they can't. Mm -hmm. When they <laughs> won't, not so Keep much. going. Yeah. yeah. When they won't, not so much. Yeah. I'll stand but, my ground. Well, mm -hmm. even with work, though, talk a little bit about a sense of control with work. Um, you know, at work, I... I guess I feel like I have the clearest picture of the destination mm -hmm. that we're headed toward. And I want to make sure that other people stay aligned to that. And mm -hmm. so I guess the sense of control comes from just checking in to make sure that everybody's still tracking toward that destination. Because okay. I really don't want to go down any rabbit trails. So um, delegating mm -hmm. versus? Um, delegating versus, I don't know. 
micromanaging? I, the I don't micromanage. No, you don't. I do not micromanage. Because one of your strengths is delegating. Really? Yes. Oh, well, that's nice to know. <laughs> it is. And maybe we read past that one. But again, that's the difference between a choleric choosing a weakness and a choleric choosing a strength. Mm -hmm. A micro micromanager that's telling them what to do and people are following them in fear versus somebody who's right. delegating and it's influential and people want to follow you. Okay. Right? Oh. Let's go into that. Coworkers yeah. and loyalty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Um. You know, again, I, I don't think I go to work expecting a lot out of people in terms of them, you know, um, demonstrating loyalty to me. Mm -hmm. But we have a really good team dynamic. Mm -hmm. um, what if, so I don't what know what if I you would... were walking to the bathroom and you heard a couple of your teammates talking to somebody else um, and they were saying good things about you? She's a great leader. Um, she always lifts us up. She gives us a chance to make decisions. She really has our back. I'd be flattered and embarrassed mm -hmm. in equal portions. <laughs> That's how I would feel. Yep. Flattered and embarrassed. I would probably run. Yeah. Well, um, from the they don't even have part, to know that so. you heard it. Okay. Right? That's good. Um, but, but would that kind of go into your definition of loyalty? Absolutely. Okay. What if they were saying unkind words about you? Oh, my gosh. What, what would happen? I would be kind of crushed. Kind of. Um, kind of crushed. Yeah. yeah. I don't even know how I, yeah, I don't know what I would do with that. Because mm -hmm. um, that would require some really challenging rebuilding of trust. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because. I would not enjoy that. No. Let's not go there. Because it, be, <laughs> because it attacks. This, I guess it does, right? right? And, and you're even that, getting a little yeah. emotional little about up. it. Yeah. Because. Don't you dare do yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but, but that's what I want you to feel. Mm -hmm. Because this is how you're wired. And that is a trigger point for you. So yeah. we want to make sure that this is being filled okay. in a good way. Got it. Right? So then there's credit for work. Tell me about that. At first, most cholerics. Oh, I don't need credit for work. Yeah, yeah, you know, I've, I grew up um, in my earlier career um, having had a boss who I guess used a quote by someone else and said, there's no limit to what you can accomplish if you don't care who gets the credit. Mm -hmm. And so I've lived off of that. But I'll be honest with you. Um, <laughs> Please when do. I'm, when I uh, recognize that someone has hijacked an idea or taking credit for an idea um, or not giving credit for an idea, anything in that lane, mm -hmm. um, it's hard. Yeah. Um, and I, I can get a little injured. So now in, this, in the next days to come, I would hope you would pause there and go, okay, how is this being filled? Right. How am I responding to this? Not mm -hmm. reacting to it, but mm -hmm. responding to it with things from my strength side. Right. The green or the phlegmatics needs are harmony, feeling of worth, lack of stress, and respect. Um, so one that stands out for me is harmony. Mm -hmm. And I, I think about work and home and just things that I'm passionate about. Uh, but at home, I have three kids, eight and under, so... Um, <laughs> There's not always quiet. Mm -hmm. I like to say that my kids live out loud. Yeah, um, <laughs> there you so, go. Yes. Um, uh, it's there's a lot of energy mm -hmm. um, from the time they wake up till they go to bed, or mm -hmm. till we work on mm -hmm. going to bed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Which now you're going to have a whole different lens to look at as yeah. you start looking at your children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. through what kind their of language color? am I using? Sure, absolutely. Am I connecting with them? Um, so, harmony. Um, I like to be physically mm -hmm. involved with them, whether it's playing outside, mm -hmm. wrestling, um, you know, engaging them in a hike or mm -hmm. at the pool, something that um, will um, help us to connect physically right. and, and get some of that energy out. So what I'm hearing then is, yeah. as long as everybody's getting along mm -hmm. and nobody's fighting or killing each other if they're right. under eight, right? is everybody's just getting along, that's harmony to you. Totally. It doesn't mean that everybody's in separate rooms doing something. No, no. You can be all together, but everybody getting along. Getting along. 
right? Yeah, getting along is good. Getting along is <laughs> very good, right? So define me lack of stress. This is one of my favorite ones for the phlegmatic. Um, I think of lack of stress as my weekends. Mm -hmm. So um, work during the work week, I'm passionate about what I do, mm -hmm. so it's okay to have a level of stress there and conflict and, you know, um, different things that we work through, mm -hmm. but I like to relax on the weekend. So mm -hmm. um, I want there to be some downtime. Yeah. Um, and I think I recharge with that. Yeah. With that downtime. So lack of, again, conflict or confrontation yeah. or combative words, just everything again going kind of harmonious, yeah. right? And can also bring down your stress level. So like a to-do list. Um, mm -hmm. Early on in marriage, that there was a conflict around mm -hmm. um, chores and okay. and quality time, where my wife wanted us to get things done, and I wanted us to sit down and connect okay. with each other, whether it's watching a game or watching a show. Um, and so, one of the ways we work through that is having a to-do list mm -hmm. where everything doesn't have to get done. It's kind of like a menu. Okay. Like. If some of these get done, it's a win. Great. So then I could choose what I got done, and I, I'd want to overachieve and get more done instead mm -hmm. of thinking they all have to get done. Yeah. So it's more options. So is this something in the lack of stress you've noticed your whole life? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I would say so. Do you remember anything from when you were a child that could show you that? I grew up with a dad who was more red, more choleric. Okay. Choleric, mm -hmm. more red, more choleric. So he um, had to, um, and there's probably some melancholy too. He had when he would teach me to do something, it had to be just right. Okay. So mowing the lawn, I had to mow in straight lines and get every blade of grass. And <laughs> no matter how hard I tried, <laughs> he would find the spot that I missed or that Ooh. I didn't do perfectly. Mm -hmm. And so with that, um, I would get frustrated and um, get down on myself or angry right. and would not feel respected, would not yeah. feel like he's trusting me with this and letting me go. Yeah. Felt like he was micromanaging it. Yeah. So that was difficult. And it, at times I'd be like, oh, I just want to give up. Mm -hmm. um, so. But you didn't. But, but that feeling of worth, that's yeah. kind of where I would definitely put that. Yeah. It shows that, you know, you you wanted to feel valued. Yeah. So, so when I he gave you that instruction, right? To like get it right. And mm -hmm. then I'd, be let down. So yeah. one time in particular, I remember going into our garage after, and I was about to go up the stairs, and he had gotten on to me for something. I don't know mm -hmm. if it was mowing the lawn or something else, but he had gotten on to me, and I started to tear up and um, and cry. And as I did, like he had been going at me pretty hard with his words, and as I did, he backed off, and <clears throat> he said these words that I will always remember, just that he didn't want to break my spirit, that God had given me a gentle heart and a gentle spirit, and he didn't want to break that in me. And wow, he showed me wow. respect. Yeah, and mm -hmm. feeling and, of worth, and, right? I felt so much more. I'm feeling it with you. Yeah. That was a powerful thing. And from a parent, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? It's huge. What do you think about that as a red parent? You know, actually what you were just talking about, because I think I was answering mainly in my work side brain, mm -hmm. um, but as you were telling that story about your dad micromanaging the mowing of the lawn, I'm like, wow, if my kids ever listen to this, they're gonna be like, liar, liar, pants on fire. Because <laughs> when it comes to things around the house, mm -hmm. I can micromanage mm -hmm. pretty intensely because I can get it done faster, mm -hmm. better, and I hugely value a super tidy space. Um, and so, and how do they respond? You know, not well. Not well. Um, <laughs> yeah. How is that working for you? Particularly, right? I have a daughter who I'm pretty sure I know is green, mm -hmm. um, and a daughter who is yellow, and those two in particular mm -hmm. can't respond to my criticism, um, and shouldn't have had to endure it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess is what I would say. Like, but here's the thing we want to get out of this session is that the words matter. Yeah, I get you know, that. They get speak, that. Yeah. you know, not only to our hearts, but to the people we're speaking to, right? Mm -hmm. So what we heard Jeremy say that I would hope you all take with you today is all these years later, 30, 25, 30 yeah. years later, 
those are the words that he's still thinking about. Mm -hmm. Those are the words that filled these innate needs for him. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. So right now, Ooh, that's um, good. yeah. How are you feeling? Are you feeling a little overwhelmed? Are you feeling In a good? Way, good? Though, I think. I, are you, you feeling know, skeptical? What are you thinking? No, encouraged, mm -hmm. um, but also like, wow, mm -hmm. aware. You know, like, thank goodness there's still time. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> to work on my words. Yeah. Yes, and there's um, and, and it's a journey, but there's still time. Learning the innate needs can be a little overwhelming. It can make you rethink some things you've said. It can also make you rethink some things that were said to you or about you. I know some yellows who need attention, who've been told their whole life to calm down, sit down, quiet down. Some blues who've been called rude for needing space and silence. And some greens who've been labeled lazy when they were just trying to stay away from the stress. Based on my experience, and maybe yours too, culture kind of shames some of these needs, right? Good husbands, good parents, good leaders shouldn't want this stuff. I'm choleric, red, so I crave credit for work. It feels great when my wife notices what I do around the house or for our daughter. But needing that credit feels kind of selfish, you know? Good dads are just expected to make sacrifices. Learning the innate needs hopefully gives you freedom. You were designed by God with these cravings built right in. You don't have to feel bad about them. Some of us have been walking around feeling guilty for wanting this stuff. And because most likely your parents, siblings, spouse, coworkers, almost everyone else in your life has a different temperament than you, you can convince yourself that something's wrong with you or that something's wrong with them. God wired you with these needs and gave you healthy ways, including loved ones, to fill them. So a few years ago, I was unemployed not totally sure what was next for me. And I started feeling called to grad school, to seminary. And that was gonna be complicated for my family, but my wife said to me, I trust you. I have no trouble following you because I've seen how you follow God. Man, let me tell you, that put wind in my sails. I'm built to need loyalty and that was loyalty. Now I'm lucky my wife knew which words to say. Imagine if instead of loyalty, she had given me space and silence. That would have hurt a whole lot. Because she got it right, I still remember what she said five years later. Understanding this piece of the temperaments framework is huge. It'll help you know yourself so much better. And eventually with practice, it'll make your communication with others so much better, so much more effective, so much kinder.